What's up everybody, this is Jack from Crypto49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today I want to talk about how to create limit orders in the Gecko Trading Bot. As you can see right here on the screen, I have the Coinbase Pro Sandbox opened right here. Today the Sandbox prices look a little bit more closer to what the market reality is. I mean it's a little, a little bit higher, it's 4000 I think the last video I made was around like 2000 I don't remember exactly. But anyway point being is I'm going to show you how to make a limit order in Gecko today. So essentially right now Gecko does sticky orders. So if we put a order in right now, it will put it right at the top of the order book right here. So it will be matching everyone else's order at 4152.48. In my previous video I talked about uh, beating all the other Gecko orders if there is actually a spread that's greater than 0 0.01 cents. In this case right now there isn't. Let's go back one second though. Why do you even want to have limit orders compared to sticky orders? Well for one thing, if you're running something like step gains, one of the other strategies I have written in the past and talked about in the past, the strategy executes when the price goes down 3% and then it sells when the price goes up 2%. But problem with that is if the strategy executes at a buy but then it keep on chasing the uh, actual price, like chasing to the top of the order book, you end up buying and selling to a point where you might even have a slight loss. I actually had that experience a um, couple weeks ago so it wasn't too bad it was like a few cents it wasn't it wasn't something crazy but point being you don't want gecko to be chasing the top of the order book for certain strategies right now i already have gecko set up to run a limit orders and i modified it slightly so that the intention is when you first create the order it will just place it at the top of the order book exactly like a sticky order but when the price changes, Gecko won't try to move your order to the top of the order book. It will just stay at the same price exactly where it is. Since this is a sandbox, there is not a lot of movement, so you really can't see what's going on if I stick it onto the top of order book. What I'm going to do is, I modified it slightly so that the limit order will buy $1 less than the top of the order book price. So I'm going to run it and I'm going to show you what it looks like. There we go. Look at it right here. It just created a new limit order that is $1 below the top of the order book. So you can see that it didn't actually stick it to the top. I mean, you can keep like this if you want. Like if this is what you want to do, you can make the modifications I did. But ideally, you would want it to be at the top of the order book and just not have it move. So let me show you how the code works. So first of all, Going back to this post right here that uh, Paul Guo put in uh, last year, um, not not a post, more like an issue ticket that he put in for uh, Axe Mike regarding the fact that limit order doesn't work. And he specified that the create order method has been called, right? As you see here, this is uh, called in the create function, the create order method. The price has no value, it's actually never instantiated, so I don't know. <laughs> why the price is even uh, set up this way right here. So essentially, the limit order doesn't work as I mentioned last week and it still doesn't work currently in Gecko, but we can make it work. And that's basically what I did. So first thing is you go back to the Gecko broker because the Gecko broker is the order execution library as, as X might call it. And in this post, he explains how it pretty much works in terms of uh, the mm -hmm. Gecko broker using specific types of uh, orders that you would want to you want gecko to use so the default is sticky and the only thing that is working is sticky orders but he does have the limit order somewhat in place even though it doesn't work and if you read a little bit more into how he actually implements it you would instantiate gecko broker in here just showing you as an example you don't this is not exactly how it works in gecko but this is an idea so from that point on inside the instance you would choose a sticky type you choose a sticky type to create a sticky order but we're going to choose a limit type so now let's go into the actual code so in trader.js is where you actually configure the type of order you would like to use so in here it, this was originally sticky order i changed it to limit 
But once you change this, doesn't mean it will actually work because there's actually a check function inside Gecko Broker to check the order type. So your order type have to match the expected orders that Gecko Broker can process. Since limit order is not something that can, they can currently process right now, it will fail out. So what you have to do is actually go into index.js and this is where you define the different types. So I actually added, so this is, you see the green, this is show you that this is a new line, added, um, added code. So added constant limit equals to require. You're basically requiring the limit.js file. And then in the export, you will export both the sticky and the limit. So once you do that, then you'll be able to get past that check on Gecko, uh, on Gecko broker that checks the actual function. So now you won't, it won't throw out the drone unknown order type because that's the first one I came across. So once we got through that problem, we actually have to go inside to limit.js. So limit.js is in the same location as sticky.js. I think it's under the exchange order section. Once you get inside limit.js, there's a lot of things you need to fix. So the first thing is the constructor itself. You have to change the constructor to just instead of bringing in the API, you actually are bringing in the API market config and capabilities inside an object. Essentially, this will let you define this.api.round amount, which you'll need to do a little bit later. Because if you just use constructor and bring in the API that way, you'll need to you end up writing something like this.api.api.round amount, which sounds a little bit funky. So once you modify the constructor, you get past that problem with the round amount. But before you get to that even, you come across this problem right here. So right now, this dot post only equals to params dot post only. Params is actually not populated. If you look at, I think it was under Gecko Broker, either Gecko Broker or Trader, I don't remember exactly. Order, order dot create side amount parameters. So Gecko Broker does pass in parameters. But if you look at here, the create order function within uh, Gecko Broker, it has all these uh, things like type size, amount, parameters, and handler. But this is get this is called from trader.js, and trader.js. I know that gets a little crazy with the different the with all the same name anyway. They use different parameters in there. So inside the create order function for trader.js. They have this thing here, this dot broker dot create order. It calls, it calls the gecko brokers create order function, and as you can see here, it only has type side amount, even though the create order function in gecko broker supports type side amount parameters and handler. We are actually not passing in any parameters or any handler variables into this create order function. So what that means is when gecko broker going all the way down to here, calls order.create on your limit.js function, it passes in the parameters that, that is empty. So when you get the parameters in here inside limit.js, it's actually not going to do anything. So this will actually crash right away. So this only equals to params.post only. Params is undefined. So that's why I added this check right here. If params, if params actually defined, then we actually determine what post only is. So at this point, I didn't even add the code to um, to add in params because that is just kind of getting into the rabbit hole of things. And my basic, basic thing was just to get limit orders to work on Gecko. So once I got past that, the next thing was I just threw in some debug code right here just to get an idea. Once since I had a side variable and uh, data, just to make sure that this that data is actually available in here. This that data contains, if you guys want to look at it, I mean, actually, Console.log provides a lot of information. So this data provides the balances of your BTC, your USD, you know, uh, how much basically you have for that trade pair. In addition, it will also tell you um, the bid and ask price of that particular trade pair. So you definitely need that information to determine what price to create the buy or sell order into. The side is actually just buy or sell, very simple. So what I did was if side equal to buy, then I just set the price to equal to the bid price, which is what people are buying at, minus one. And that's how I was able to get the buy order to be $1 less than the actual, the best bid order price, the BBO price. I also did the same thing for the sell. The sell will actually be $1 higher. I actually haven't tested it yet. Again, this is code that is really, I would say experimental. 
I'll probably just add this to my experimental branch. Uh, I'll let you guys know uh, which branch it will be added into in the when I during post production of this video. This is the most important portion basically of um, the limit order part, actually setting the price. So once you set the price, now this that create order will pass in a price that actually has a value, not like the original gecko, which just doesn't set the value for the price and actually pass it out to create order. Now it actually has a value inside this that price, and it was passed in the amount as well. And the inside create order right here is where they actually submit this order to the exchange. Again, this that amount equal to this that API that round amount. So this is what I mentioned before where it gets a little crazy if you didn't uh, set up the constructor properly. So this is where you needed to, to set up the constructor properly to be able to get to this uh, round amount function when inside your um, inside this API. It's very straightforward, round amount, round price. So you just want to make sure that your um, your function, your amount is within the specification of the exchange that you're working with. So same thing with round price. So once it does that, it has this thing right here. If this dot post only. So again, this this section is completely ignored because we're not using post only. Post only is not even uh, filled in right now. Remember, we don't have any parameters. <laughs> so, but this will actually draw an error. At least that was how Axmite originally created it. It'll draw an error if it try to buy order that crosses the order book. What we're buying will definitely stay within the order book just because of how we set this that price. I mean, I imagine you can have your strategy sent the price to Trader.js and Trader.js will send it to Gecko Broker. Gecko Broker will send it to Limit.js and you'll be able to set whatever price you want. Something that I probably will try to do eventually, but not something I want to tackle right now. That would be helpful if you want, if you're going to set a price, you don't want to cross the book. So that's where if you want to set a price, you also want to make sure that post only is set or not set. And that will help determine whether or not your order will be a limit order or a market order. So the next section here is another thing that will cause your gecko to crash, which is the a very fill constant. So the original limit um, .js file didn't have this, and it called a ready fill again. It was calling something that wasn't there. So what happens is it will crash again, just like many. <laughs> it was to say a ready fill undefined. So I have to say I probably went through eight or nine different fixes to actually get limit order to work because there's so many different variables that were not set up properly. In order to set the ready fill variable, you need to have this dot calculated field, and this dot calculated field wasn't in limit.js. So I actually have to copy it over from sticky.js. So right here, so same thing inside create order, it has this dot calculated field. And inside here, you're able to find the, uh, the method calculate field, and that will help you determine if your order is partially filled. If it's partially filled, only by the remaining portion that hasn't been filled yet. So that is the idea of the already filled and calculate filled. So once you have that in place, and once you have this line and the method copied down here, I think I moved this somewhere around here. Let me see right over here. So I copy this from sticky.js into limit.js. Now I'm able to go into the next section, which is this.submit. And this, um, this uh, submit will actually submit the order, it will fill, it will process, and it should be done. After it actually submit the order, it runs into another issue, which will crash Gecko again, even though after your order submitted, the good thing is your order submitted, the bad thing is Gecko crash. So the problem is this. So this is, um, the error that I got type error this dot order dot create summary is not a function. So inside trader.js number two line ninety one it after the order is completed see this dot order on complete so basically it completed as in it completed posting that order onto the exchange and exchange got it has on the order book. It's going to call this method create summary but create summary is actually not inside limit.js. So again, I had to copy it from sticky.js. So um, let me see, create summary right over here. So I copied this whole entire section. That's actually pretty, it's a pretty big um, method right here. So it goes from like 574 to like 663. So yeah, so it's like almost 100 lines of code right in here that will provide a summary of what was done. 
I actually haven't ran this through completely yet. I'm not sure if this even works. So, but I did copy this whole entire thing into limit.js. Hopefully, uh, have no other issues and be able to keep Gecko going and not crash out for any specific reason. So that's basically it with the code. So I know I have been a little bit behind, actually quite, quite a bit behind in terms of answering questions from you guys, the comments you guys have on YouTube. So I'm going to try to at least answer one question live and we'll go from there. Maybe I'll try to answer more questions as well, but I'll try to answer one question live right now. And the, the question that I got asked was, is there a possibility to run Gecko UI and plugins? Thank you. Is it possible? There's always a possibility. Is this built out? It's currently not built out that I know of. I know AxMike has been trying to work on this to get the plugins built out to work with the UI. I'm not sure how far he got in, uh, got due to the process before he started uh, Gecko Plus. So right now, um, I don't think it works. If anyone's willing to tackle that, that's going to be an awesome thing because as much as I don't use the UI myself, I do see a lot of potential to really um, have the UI control multiple geckos and be able to work with different plugins. That would be awesome. But right now, the UI uses so many things in different places that the plugins simply don't work. I know for one thing, the config file that we use to set up the plugins, that config file is generated on the fly whenever a... Um, Gecko is created on the Gecko UI. So I wonder how to set the plugins in a UI environment. But that's something that hopefully someone can tackle. So anyway, that is my video for today, guys. Just want to remind you guys, as always, I am on Patreon. And I create a post once a month on different ways to make money. And now hopefully turning trend from bear to bow, maybe, you know, I mean, we have, I think we have crossed 4,000 a few times at this point. So hopefully we are making the turnaround at this point. So, but it, still, I mean, it's always good to try to make money in any market, but obviously it's a lot easier to make money turning bold and bare. At least that's the assumption. If you guys want that content, definitely become a patron. You can get that content as with as low as $2 donation. In addition, you're really just supporting my work, really letting me know that people are interested and running trading bots, not just Gecko trading bots. I mean, eventually I will look into other trading bots besides Gecko. I mean, Gecko is just one of, you know, I think there's like at least 10 or 20 different trading bots out there. I mean, at least the working ones anyway. And I definitely want to look at other trading bots down the line. So I definitely appreciate it if you guys do support my work by going to patreon.com slash crypto 49er. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out.